Welcome to Green River College's GatorCast, college's official podcast at Green River College. This is Suzanne Johnson speaking to you today, president at the college. And today, before we jump into our podcast on academic planning, there is a special and important event coming up very soon at Green River College that every student at this college should have on their calendar. And it is called Advising Day. It is January 30th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I'm joined with Allison Warner, who's our Director of Advising and Career Center here at the college. And she's our guest today on the podcast that you're about to listen to about academic planning. Allison, tell me about Advising Day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Advising Day is coming up in a couple weeks. This is a quarterly event for all students to attend. We have it fall, winter, and spring quarters. This is an opportunity for students to take a pause and have a chance to meet with their faculty or staff advisor, as well as to be connected to the resources on campus that can assist them in accomplishing their goals. Advising Day is, again, um, 9 to 6. From 9 to 3, it'll be in the Student Union Building. And then from 3 to 6, we're going to be co-located together in the Career and Advising Center, which is in the Student Affairs Building. So what students should be planning to come? I think every student should come. There's every student every should be coming. Every student. There is something for everyone. Even if you know what classes you're going to take next quarter, this is an opportunity for you to meet with an advisor and or a faculty in an area of interest and learn either more about a program that you might be exploring or sit down and, act and write out your academic plan for your program. So so now that we're on that, an academic plan, if you don't know what that means, stay tuned to the podcast because we're going to be talking about academic plans. Mm-hmm. Um, but since you brought this up in terms of advising and you just mentioned uh, even if you have your classes planned out for next term, um, let's talk a little bit of it about advising because I've come to know that many students believe that advising is picking out what classes you should be taking the next term or next semester or what classes they're taking for that year. Mm-hmm. And newsflash out there, um, that's really not what advising is about. Yes, you can double check and make sure you've got the right classes or learn what courses you should take based on what you want to study. But Allison, can you say a little bit about what advising is really about? Yeah, it's a small part of it is that registration piece, the big picture. And the the major resource that advising can provide for students is identifying what they want to do, helping to identify what their academic and career goals are, and then helping them to map out a plan for how they're going to get there. Advisors can be mentors. They can be sources of uh, referrals to other services on campus. They can help to, you know, assist students with just daily navigation issues within and outside the classroom, like with where to go for tutoring or academic uh, assistance. But again, also big picture stuff, helping students to identify why they're here and where they're going to go. Holy cow. So, so advising much. everybody <laughs> is life planning. It's life planning. And helps answer questions about who mm-hmm. you are, where you want to go, where you're going currently and how are you going to get there so listen up green river college students go gators advising day january 30th 9 a.m to 6 Mm p.m student union from 9 a.m to 3 p.m and from 3 to 6 in the first floor of student affairs at the career and advising center january 30th put it on your calendars i'll be tweeting that out you can follow me at grc prez johnson stay tuned for our podcast on academic planning have a great day We're going to start a whole series of podcasts all about student success and completion, retention. That's what these topics are all about. And I have with me today our Director of Advising um, here at Green River College, and that is Allison Warner, and she's sitting across from me drinking her coffee, um, ready to have a conversation. And we're going to be talking about academic planning, and oh boy, that's a big title, big heading. So there's a lot to cover here. But Allison, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I'm so glad you you were able to come. Um, How about we start this conversation and tell everybody a little bit more about yourself. How long have you been at Green River? How'd you get here? What's your story? 
Well, I've been in Green River. This will be my 15th year, I'm proud to say. And from the moment I came to campus 15 years ago for an interview, I knew this was home. This was a place I wanted to work. What made it feel that way? You know, honestly, it was the trees. It was environment. And then I got to know some of the people in my interview. And I just it felt like this was where I wanted to be. I didn't originally plan to go into advising. I actually started off in a completely different academic area. Well, let's talk a little bit yeah. about that because so, we're going to be talking about academic planning today. What? Tell me tell me your story. What's your path to Green River? Well, when I started out in the University of Washington, I uh, started off trying to go into primatology. I wanted Primatology? To be, yes. I was interested in animal behavior. And Any particular animals? Primates. Uh, primates? Yes. Chimpanzees, gorilla? Specifically lesser apes. I was into the siamangs. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so they are um, in the ape family, but more specifically, the lesser ape family. Okay. So I, I pursued that academic um, pathway. And so you're going to study primatology. Yeah, I took some classes and uh, went to the zoo and worked at the zoo for a while. And worked Which with zoo? The, the Woodland Park Zoo. And where is that? That's in Seattle. So I okay. got to work with the primates there. Um, the Sorry, univers- everybody. You can tell I'm, I'm not originally <laughs> from this area. I'm still <laughs> learning my, my, my bearings here. So, and then University of Washington also has a primate lab. So I got to work with some of the monkeys there as well. Wow, wonderful, mm-hmm, wonderful. Mm-hmm. And so did you ultimately get a degree in primatology? No, so my degree was in psychology, but UW has an um, has a primate, like animal behavior pathway you can oh, choose from. Similar background yeah. as I have. Right? Yeah, but uh, going into that profession, I thought, you know, there's a lot of aspects of that that would not necessarily be applicable to my goals as wanting to have a nine to five job, wanting to stay put and raise a family. I didn't really think going to Indonesia and living there for the next 10 years was going to allow me the kind of lifestyle I wanted, which was just, you know, to be local and stay local and and um, help people. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So then what happened next? So I got a job out of college um, working as a temp agency and tried a lot of different things. I actually had four jobs before. I, one day I decided I needed to go back to graduate school and pursue something in education. I knew I wanted to help people, and I think a lot of people feel that way. They they know they have a desire to be in a profession that, that's in a helping profession. So I was lucky enough to find a program at Seattle University. Okay. And as I, I started off in a special education, I wanted to go back and work in K-12. through and worked in the Kent School District for a while as a school psych assistant. And I realized that my um, passion is helping students getting into college and pursuing college and, and getting into a career that is fulfilling and provides them with the life that you know they desire to have. So um, college became, higher education became my passion after that point. Thank you for sharing your story, because I think it's so important, especially for uh, student listeners. I know we have lots of people listening Mm -hmm. to this podcast that are staff, faculty, people that are in our communities. You know, they may or may not work at Green River College, but I know we also have a large number of student listeners. And I think many times student listeners think that uh, when they go into offices or they're in a classroom, that whoever they're looking at that works at a college, that that's what their job has always been. Um, It's the job that they obviously uh, plan to have, and they don't realize how many different careers people at a college might have had before they actually started working at a college like you. Mm -hmm. Or all the different things that that they might have tried out before they had this particular job. Um, So for our student listeners out there who are wondering who you are, where you're going, where you want to go, how you're going to get there, um, life is an interesting journey. And uh, it might take many, many different turns, um, none of them bad or or negative. Um, You might have several different careers in your life. And so having the ability to be open to how you grow and develop and and change as you get older is a really important part of of living. And, you know, there actually have been a few students that have asked, um, I thought they were joking, but they actually were serious. And they said, how do you become a college president? And um, 
you know, that's a, a topic for a whole other podcast, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, they were surprised to find out all the different things I had done before I was yeah. college president. And the fact that I wasn't really aiming to be one yeah. uh, was kind of a surprise. Things kind of happen to you in life as well as you make them happen for yourself. Yeah. So everybody, when you're in the career and advising offices, which are located where? It's located in the Student Affairs Building. We're on the first floor right adjacent to the main lobby. So we're here today mm -hmm. to talk about academic planning. So what is that? Oh, it's such a big topic, but I think it's one of the most important actions a student can take upon starting college. And academic planning is the process of really creating a map, a pathway for getting from start to finish. It's the process of mapping out your classes, um, sequencing them to um, um, in the order that they are required to be taken. Um, and but it's ultimately it's um, starting with what is the end goal, starting with what the end goal is, and working your way backwards. If that makes sense. So. Well, sure. What? So an end goal might be um, transferring yeah. to a f another institution, four-year college mm -hmm. or university after completing an associate's degree, a two-year degree. Yeah. Um, or an end goal might be that they're taking, the student might be taking um, specific kinds of courses and mm -hmm. then transferring before they complete a degree. Mm -hmm. so right. So is that the kind of end goal that you're talking mm -hmm. about? It could be a degree, a certificate, going on, taking prerequisites for another college. Um, so when you are cr starting the academic planning process, it is important to think about what the end goal is for you. What What is it you're trying to accomplish here? Why are you here? Why are you what here? Are you, what's mm -hmm. brought you to Green River? Yeah. So when do you start your academic planning? What's the right time to start? A bit from the very beginning, though so it's going to be after you probably register for your first quarter classes around that time, and you can even start prior to that. We encourage students and we invite them to come and meet with us during their first couple quarters at Green River. We encourage them to meet with their advisor either in the current advising office or their faculty advisor. Students that are exploratory, we want to sit down with you and help guide you towards the resources that can help you become more decided on your goals if you're undecided. Um, academic planning really starts with that goal, but it is a long-term process. You would sit down with your advisor and map out your classes, but just know that these things, that your plan changes and evolves. And so even though you may start at the beginning, it's not the end after you leave that advising session. We encourage you to come back in throughout your journey and check on your plan and make sure that you modify it as things change or life happens. Okay, so I've applied to college, mm -hmm. and um, I've been admitted, and means I've been accepted to come to Green River, and I come to, what do I do first? So for the onboarding process, when you first start at Green River, you get your first email from Green River inviting you and welcoming you to the college, and that email, you actually get a link in there to online orientation. Okay. And that it welcomes you to the different resources and services that are offered at Green River and the process for becoming either more decided on your program um, or identifying your program and the requirements. But also, so at, at orientation, yeah. they would be talking with you or you'd be exploring different things yeah. in terms of what you might be studying or mm -hmm. how to pick classes. Yeah, the first step is the online orientation. And then after that, you finish that, you do your placement, and then you come in to meet with an advisor through the new student advising and registration process. Okay, so you do an online orientation, mm -hmm. and then you come to campus and take placement tests? Mm -hmm. Or you get your placement figured out by meeting with our getting started specialists. Not everyone has to take a placement test. Sometimes we can place off of transcripts as well as other test scores and from high school. And where are getting started people? Thank you for asking. They are located also in the Career and Advising Office and the first floor of the Student Affairs Building. So I could, if I were a student, and for our listeners, if you're prospective Green River students, uh, future Green River students, once you complete the orientation, you could pop up to campus, go into the Career and Advising Center, mm -hmm. and ask to meet with a getting started advisor. Mm -hmm. And is that the beginning of academic planning at that meeting? I can th I would say yes. I would say because at that point, you're getting your foundation laid. So depending on your placement will determine where you start with your English and math classes, mm -hmm. which is the start of the plan. 
once you have that determined, then the rest of the classes can fall in place. Because really, the core of academic planning is mapping out your course sequence. What courses do you take and when? And how, and how long is it going to take you to finish whatever your goal is? Your degree well, or so that, that becomes an interesting thing to explore. So academic planning is really about mapping out, making a schedule mm -hmm. of the classes you're taking, that term, and all the terms to come. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess depending on whether you're here full-time or whether you're here part-time will determine how many terms you're going to have to be here to complete a degree or complete the courses you've come to take um, or a certificate. So do all students who come to Green River um, – are they full-time students? No, I mean, our students are full-time. They're part-time. You take classes online. Maybe you take them in the evening, during the morning. Perhaps some quarters you're going to be part-time and some quarters you're going to be full-time. And that's important that when you're creating your academic plan, you're working this out with your advisor to determine what's the best schedule based on what you have going on in your life outside of the classroom. Okay. I often compare academic planning to going to the grocery store without a list. <laughs> well, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> I, know, um, I like to leave it on the counter. Yeah. And um, <laughs> after working on it for quite a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So you go there, and what happens to me is my mind goes blank, and I forget everything that I was supposed to purchase, and I end up purchasing half of what I thought I was supposed to get and a whole bunch of what I didn't need. Okay. So time and money. So you spend a lot of time wandering the aisles, buying things that you don't need, and you end up wasting a lot of money. So because you buy things that you didn't need, you didn't need, yeah, or things that kind of uh, looked good at the time, as one of my advisors call it. You, you shop with hungry eyes, so you are going there, maybe impulsively buying things that you need at the, you think you need at the moment. So when you're creating an academic plan, there's a lot of similarities. You're making a plan so that you know what to what to buy. Right. Because we offer hundreds of courses every yeah. term. So how do you know mm -hmm. which ones to pick? Yeah. It can be kind of overwhelming. But the nice thing is we do have so many choices, but knowing what choices to take for your goal is, is really important. So we have a lot of courses that are sequential. They have to be taken in certain orders, and creating your plan helps you. Well, you have to take certain courses before others. Mm -hmm. right? Prereqs before other courses. Some courses aren't offered every quarter, so knowing when they're offered and putting that into your plan so you know when to take it and you take that opportunity when it's available, that's important as well. So it really comes down to time and money. Well, wow. okay. I, I like that analogy of the uh, supermarket because there's so many things you can get at a grocery store. Like at being in a college you know, campus, mm -hmm. you look at our course offerings, our course catalog each term. It goes for pages and pages and pages. And I think when you said it can be overwhelming, um, absolutely is true. Uh, when you Sometimes when you have so many options, it can be overwhelming, and sometimes when people feel like the making the choices are, are so hard, they might not make any choice. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like academic planning is a key to a student's success, no matter whether you're a full-time student, part-time student, um, or even taking the occasional class. So let's talk about how academic planning can be helpful in your student's success. Well, I think that most importantly, it's time and money. So you are able to map out your classes so you see how long it's going to take and when you're going to finish. So funding is wrapped around that because you need to be able to plan out how much f your funding, how much you get. Um, if you're on financial aid, you get only so much uh, funding allowance, um, nine full-time quarters. So if you map out what, how many classes you need to take and how long it's going to take you, it gives you an indication if you have enough funding that's going to get you to their destination. All right, so we're going to take a pause on that one. Uh -huh. um, we are going to have a podcast on financial aid and funding. And there are many, many opportunities and options for students to help finance their education, which allows for great flexibility in terms of how you can go about taking classes and how much time you have to complete classes. So for any of you that just heard that whole funding topic, let's uh, stay tuned in upcoming podcasts in terms of financial aid and financial supports. Um, 
But I'd like to circle back to this other mm-hmm. question, right? Because w- when you're thinking about planning classes, if I were a student out there, um, which I know so many of our students are thinking this, because I've heard students share this with me, they'll say, I don't know what I want to do. Mm-hmm. If I don't know what I want to do, and if I haven't decided and I have, I, I'm not able to make a decision right now about what I want to study, how do I plan? Mm, that's a great question. How do you plan when you don't know what the destination is yet? Well, certainly you can't plan out your full degree, and we would want you to pause and take some time to explore career direction. We've got resources on Career and Advising Center to help you take some time to explore by taking some career assessments. Uh, We have a career advisor who's here to help interpret the career assessment, and, and we encourage that early on as well. So, and Josh will share that. The other thing I think is kind of looking at another reason why six, uh, academic planning is so critical is what we hate to hear in advising, but we do hear it as students who come to us at the end and they think they're done. They think they've finished with their entire program, their degree or certificate, and they're missing a class or right, two classes. They thought they had everything mapped out. They've been checking and occasionally this happens. The student is not completed. Having a plan is a way to prevent that. It's a way to keep on track. Uh, we want students, to, again, to be progressing and being able to take the classes when they're offered in a sequence that they should be taken um, so that they don't miss anything. You know, I want to emphasize what Allison has just shared out, that every term there are students that go to the advising center who believe that they are finished with their degree or they're about to finish up their degree and they discover that they're missing something or they took a course um, that might not have been the exact right course for what it was they were trying to accomplish Mm -hmm. and they need to take an additional course. So if there's a lesson to be learned today, everyone, every single student that is listening to this podcast, you have a faculty advisor If you don't know who your faculty advisor is, Allison, how do students find out who their faculty advisor is? Yeah, so every student is assigned an advisor, and to look that information up, you go into the same webpage, you go into class registration. The class registration (laughs) website, Mm -hmm. which is found at? So there's a quick links. uh, On our mm -hmm. greenriver.edu website, there's a quick links. There's a quick links. Top right corner. Mm -hmm. And you can pull that down and get into class registration, or... Even the more class efficient. registration website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the bottom of the main page, there is another link at the very bottom in the green banner on the bottom. On there is a very helpful right column of several links that I'll reference later on. But my advisor is the link that gets you to your assigned advisor. Um, and of course, though, then there is the advising office where every student can go mm-hmm. as well. Because mm-hmm. um, I know sometimes students will say, well, I, I know I have an advisor that's a faculty member, but their office hours aren't at any times when I can meet. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not on campus when I'm on campus and so on. So what happens when that occurs? Yeah, we are available uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, we do serve students when faculty aren't available. And we serve as partners in the faculty and uh, professional advising Model, right. yeah. Advisors in our career advising center mm-hmm. and faculty at our college, they are partners in giving good advice and consistent information to all of you student listeners out there. So the takeaway right now is see an advisor. So let's back up and where we were. Mm-hmm. We, we were at the student is beginning. They're here now to register yep. for their first term classes. And we have some students that know kind of what they want to study. But mm-hmm. we have many other students that aren't sure what to study. And so my question had been, uh, I don't know what I want to do yet, so how do I plan? Mm-hmm. So next to the career, you know, career exploration and all of that, um, how does that student who's still not sure and they can do a career exploration, how do you, how do, you do your co- course planning, your academic planning, when you just want to explore? Well, I mean, certainly we, give, we want to give students the room and time to explore. That's part of the process. And we often tell students, if you can make a decision by the end of your first year, then you're probably you're in a good place for being able to plan for either a university transfer or transition into a career technical degree by your second year. So if you need that time, three quarters typically is the max that you really should give yourself in choosing classes that are of interest to you. 
we typically do do first quarter, first year plans for students and um, for those that are exploratory. And those plans typically consist of finishing up your English and your math, which is usually a consistent requirement for most of our degrees, but also taking classes that might be of interest to you. If you have funding, though, and you'll get more information in the funding podcast, but funding does determine what you can take because you are limited to what is required for the degree that you select. Now, we typically do have, well, we're working with students that are planning to transfer to a university and they're in the exploratory process. They often choose the AA degree as the degree in which they're going to be working towards that. until they maybe change. If they do change into science or business, they may end up finishing with the AA degree, but the AA degree gives you that opportunity to explore. So for students, um, funding that's being talked about, it's really referencing financial aid. The majority of our students who come to Green River have some degree of financial assistance. And the AA degree is an Associate of Arts degree that is what we call a general education degree. It has courses across a lot of different areas, uh, arts and humanities and English and math and science and uh, social sciences, history, those areas of that sort. And that's a degree that will transfer to um, all other universities and colleges in the state and out of the state. And so one of the things that Allison's referencing in terms of funding centers on um, financial aid and how financial aid is applied to college uh, courses. And so for all of the students that are listening or people who know prospective students or current students that receive financial aid, um, check our greenriver.edu forward slash GatorCast um, location on our website, and you will find the episode around Financial Aid 101 and financial literacy, and you'll get more details about that. So an academic plan can be made, um, whether a student knows what they want to major in or study, um, Mm -hmm. or if they want to remain an exploratory student um, while they're at Green River, and they might decide what their major is once they get to their four-year school after Green River, if they're not here actually doing a four-year degree, because we actually have four-year degrees here. four-year degrees, yes. So we've been talking about, you know, the benefits of of having a plan and how that helps for success. Um, And of course, it helps with clarity and keeps us out of the grocery store buying things (laughs) that we we don't need or, or want, right? The time and money. But are there other benefits to having a plan in terms mm-hmm. of success? Other than the logistical like benefits of having the plan and having some, a roadmap, um, there's also motivational benefits as well. Tell me more about that. Yeah, an- another analogy I would like to use is uh, um, I often like to train for running races. A lesser known fact, Allison Warner here is a marathon runner. <laughs> um, and so when I am training, I have to create a plan for what how much I'm going to run and how many days. And if I don't do that, I find two things happen. One, I cheat and I don't run. <laughs> and Uh-oh. I procrastinate on what um on my training. And two, I lose motivation. I find that I'm not I'm not excited about doing it. I I I not only skip my workouts, but I kind of lose excitement. So without an aim or a goal yeah. or a clear end point Mm-hmm. You can you lose motivation. Yeah. And I see that with our students. We see our students that come in, they're in their second year. And if they're not quite sure why they're here, the second year we see the burnout. And we want to help students then get redirected to figuring out why they're here and why they are spending the time to pursue a higher education. And, um, and so the earlier that you can be deliberate in taking the time to explore your direction, your career and academic goals, Um, the less likely you will lose motivation to continue and persist. Okay, so listen out there, all you students. Having a clarity in terms of why you're here and what you want to leave with is going to help you with your motivation. We want you to stay until you complete. You've come here for a goal or a purpose. Help us help you meet that goal. So let's talk about, you know, what tools are available for students to create a plan? So... The Ed Plan tool, which many of you may have already seen, is so in on the, our website. It's on our website, and it is on the same location as where students can look up again their My Advisor and mm-hmm. class registration on their class yeah. registration yeah. website. There's a helpful. There's a um, what's it called? Ed, Ed Planning. It's called Ed Plan. 
Ed plan. plan. Yeah. Okay. Click uh, on that. <laughs> click right. on that. And that gets you to an online tool that students have access to, um, as well as your faculty or staff advisor. So the nice thing about using that tool is that it is shared between you and your advisor. Okay. So, so if, it was like a chart that you fill out? Yeah. It's a cal- It's like a, it's just basically a, um, a plan with multiple quarters and okay. you can select from classes that are going to be offered that quarter. Um, um, fill that into your plan, and you can. So you're creating your class schedule for that term, and then, yeah. but for a year, you can do this. You can do this for multiple years. Um, okay. Oh, you, for like the whole time you're here, yeah, you can do an ed plan, start to finish. Yeah, and I tell you, the students I work with, when we do the plan, that has been one of the I think um, biggest. Um, Students seem to walk away with a lot of with, um, relief once they leave with that plan. We build that into all of our advising sessions, is that if you don't have a plan, you need to create it. But EdPlan is the platform we use in order to be able to create that and share that across the other advising staff. Mm-hmm. This is really great. Um, and I love the word relief mm-hmm. because when when any of us are faced with lots of choices and we don't know what the right thing to do is, we don't know what the right choice is, um, we can feel stress. We can have a lot of anxiety. You know, mm-hmm. what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? So getting that ed plan, I'm going to call it ed as well. <laughs> okay, Getting ed all cleared up and straightened out um, probably is a very helpful tool. Yeah, very helpful tool. You know, and before you get to ed plan, I want to back up because – Using our the degree audit is really should be your first step. So Ed Plan helps you put in the classes that you know you need to take. Well, how do you know what you need? Well, on the same website for class registration, on that helpful tools column, there is a another link called Degree Audit. And Degree Audit is a way to track your progress towards any of our degrees or certificates. So these are college and university terminology Mm -hmm, uh, concepts here. Degree would be an AA or um, an AAS, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Two year degrees. Um, And then we have audit. It's a it's a, a way to check your progress. So it's like a checklist. It's a checklist. It it plugs in classes you've either registered for or have already taken into the requirements for any of our degrees. Oh, so your Ed Plan is a part of your degree audit. Right, so your ed plan for a term would fit into that degree audit, and your degree audit is what's monitoring what you've accomplished and right. what you've got s- scheduled to yes. do next. Yeah, the ed plan is what is you mapping out the classes you know you need to take, which are is visible on the degree audit tool. And once you complete the classes, you can see that the class is fitting into the requirement on the degree audit, and it checks off that you've completed it. So this is keeping track keeping of track. what you've done, what mm-hmm. you're doing right now, what you still need to get done so that you can leave with what you want to, mm-hmm. what, with why you came here in the first place. Right. Stay on track. So if there's a student out there listening right now and they say, I don't have an ed plan, what do you have to say to them? I would say come in and see us or okay. see your advisor. Find out who your advisor is. And if you don't have an advisor, if you haven't yet been assigned one, then come and see us in the Current Advising Center. We will meet with you and get you started. So and how do I make an appointment? Oh, thank you. That's another good question. So they can call us either um, at the main line for the Current Advising Center. And what's that number? It is 253-833-833. 9111 extension 2641. Okay, so they can call. Can they, they call. can they contact you via email yeah, as well? They do. We have an email address. It's called, it's a little bit harder, but it's be advised. So B E A D V I S E D. So be advised at greenriver.edu. So they can go onto that yeah. email address and, and shoot an email over. Yeah. Um, can you drop in? You can drop in. We have drop-in hours um, Monday and Tuesday evenings from 4 to 6, but you can drop in at any time and make an appointment in person as well. And we do have, um, depending on availability, we may have some of um, same-day appointments available for students as well. That's really helpful to know. Allison, if you had th- three <laughs> pieces of advice to give to our listeners today— What three pieces of advice would you have for our Green River students who are listening and anyone considering becoming part of our Green River College family? I would say the first the first piece of advice would be to spend some time exploring what you want to do. And even if you think you have a degree goal in mind, it's okay to pause and 
take advantage of some of the career assessments and career re- exploratory resources we have at Green River College. So, and being um, taking that time will help you then to create an academic plan. Come and see your advisor. That's my second um, piece of advice. Meet with your advisor, create the academic plan, and check your degree audit every quarter before and after you register for your classes. Being aware of how much you have left to complete and staying on track is really important. And I would say even after your first year, don't hesitate to come back in and see your advisor, even if you think you have everything figured out, because things change, things happen, and your advisor is here to kind of be a part of your journey and to help you out. Right. And in fact, you know, in the first year, um, we've been focusing on what happens in the first term or first Mm -hmm. year in terms of academic planning and getting a plan. Um, For all of our student listeners out there, uh, we're going to have an episode about transfer, and you're going to hear from me and others that are being interviewed that are going to tell you once you have 45 credits, you need to be back in that advising center because that's when you start talking about transfer. So there's never going to be a term that you should not be coming to visit that career and advising center or visiting your faculty advisor every term, there should be a conversation with somebody either in that advising center or your faculty advisor in terms of monitoring where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. So with that, everybody, register, subscribe to these Gator Casts. Go to greenriver.edu forward slash GatorCast. I want to thank Allison Warner, our Director of Advising Services here at Green River College, for being with us today. Um, stay tuned to future podcasts. And again, you will be able to find additional resources for this episode called Academic Planning at our greenriver.edu forward slash GatorCast. This is Suzanne Johnson. We'll catch you next time. Thank you. Thank you.